I know is so explosive. Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News, and uh, I'm going to try something crazy here today. I was dared to try to cover it all in one video. <laughs> so let's try to do this quickly. Geoengineering and weather modification exposed. Everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Charles Dudley Warner. Yeah, right. After 100 years of rainmaking, few know of man's daily experimentation overhead. This page is devoted to raising awareness of atmospheric experimentation, geoengineering, and weather modification worldwide. You breathe it. You drink it. You should know. Now, this page has several videos here. Check them out. has a, a draft legislation that would make all of this stuff more transparent and a series of articles followed by a map the legislation uh, where you actually uh, public law 92 15 CFR part 908 where you report to NOAA when you modify the weather here's two PDFs check them out Governor Schwarzenegger terminating terminating drought and cloud seeding projects across um, California and this is a timeline we'll get to that in just a second so let's start up here at the top what's uh, in this article Climate engineering programs, this is geoengineering. Different types uh, talked about here, and we're going to go through them real quick. This is the Etcetera Group's geoengineering map. Bill Gates funds geoengineering studies called Pfizer, Fund for Cli Innovative Climate and Energy Research. David Keith and Ken Caldera use Bill Gates' money to give to other scientists to study how to offset climate uh, problems using geoengineering links and details on that bill gates uh, world's top geoengineers collaborate on patents for hurricane uh, modification they also seem to be in collusion with the department of homeland security to offset uh, uh, national damage from hurricanes so you might want to look into that the need for a national hurricane initiative weathering the storm and uh, noah says no to the dhs hurricane idea and then hamp occurs anyway and here's uh, their patent for taking money for searing hurricanes. So, really quickly, Silver Lining Project, at Cloud Albedo Modification Boats, uh, John Latham, Stephen Salter, and the gang. Uh, these make bright white clouds to reflect sunlight. Ocean iron uh, fertilization, where you dump iron into the ocean to grow algae that sequester uh, CO2. The Strato Shield. This is made by um, Bill Gates' own company, Intellectual Ventures, where they actually have a hose that goes all the way up. It's got a little float, and it sprays the you know different chemicals into the sky to uh, block out the sun. It's called the Strato Shield. And then we have the Spice Program, right below that, and this is the uh, Stratospheric Particle Injection Climate Engineering Program, where they uh, literally just fly it up there similar to the strato shield and here we have weather modification programs this came from um, agriculture defense coalition thank you rosalind peterson these are all the cloud seeding programs that were you uh, mod uh <laughs> that were sent to noaa so check these out the i've got them all the way back to actually 2002 i don't know why those aren't any on here but i will put them back and i'm mapping these out on a map so you'll see those soon Weather Modification Inc.'s projects, links to all of those. Some other uh, global weather modification programs right there, CAIPEX, Colorado River Municipal Water District. There you go. So maps on that, some Chinese uh, weather modification, Texas weather modification, and that is the gist of that one. The next one is weather modification companies, back over here on the geoengineering page. And on this one, you're going to see universities and associations that study and uh, perform weather modification experiments from uh, the WMO to the North American Interstate Weather Modification Council, which appears to be closed, but there's the link. University Corporation of Atmospheric Research, UCAR and NCAR. They say since 1996, NCAR's Rainfall Enhancement Research Program has received more than 95% of its funding from outside the U.S., like the Hebrew University at Jerusalem. Look into it. Government and military, U.S. Air Force weather modification links there, NOAA, 
uh, NSF, U.S. Bureau of Land Reclamation, U.S. Department of Commerce, U.S. Department of State. The agency assigned the mission of developing and testing techniques for modifying the weather and climate as a part of its overall mission should have major but not exclusive responsibility in collaboration with the State Department for formulating and implementing weather and climate modification programs involving international collaboration with the governments of other nations. The government's activities in international cooperation can be substantially assisted by the participation of the National Academy of Sciences. So yes, our government is involved in weather modification, not just corporate entities. Moving along, American Meteorological Society's weather modification conferences. And I've got them up to 2013. I need to put the one that's coming up in January on here. I will do that. Uh, weather derivatives. We have uh, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Uh, they have they're called weather derivatives event contracts and um, people betting on the weather. Uh, insurance companies. All right, give you a scenario. Crop uh, guys growing corn. He insures his crop. Insurance company does not want crop destroyed by hail. Insurance company pays for hail mitigation, which is cloud seeding, where they go and instead of trying to make it rain, they try to make the ice crystals from hail smaller. However, uh, that's just not, <laughs> that's just not uh, very reliable to say the least. But, you know, companies like Guaranteed Weather here, your business need weather protection. They're not even joking. Weather protection for your golf courses, rain protection, snow protection, weather protection for promotions. That's real interesting. Um, so yeah, this stuff is very real, big money, lots of people involved, and I've been mapping it out. And so there, here's the timeline of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange weather derivatives <laughs> and uh, some hurricane betting in there, you see. Weather Modification Association corporate roster, all the companies involved, and as you will notice right here, NASIC, DACA, U.S. Air Force, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. That is right, the U.S. Air Force is a corporate member of the Weather Modification Association. This article has been written for two years. Texas Weather Modification Association, here's all their links, videos about it. Other, uh, Aqueous Mateo Systems, we'll get to that in a second. World Meteorological Organization expert team on weather modification. You want to talk to somebody about weather modification, call one of these people. Very, very real. And by the way, Rolf, F, Rolf is from NCAR. So on to the next article, uh, climate engineering patents. Don't want to bore you. Just going to kind of skip over it. Waiting for my website. There it is. Starting back in 1891, moving all the way up to present with things like cloud seeding carbon dioxide bullets. <laughs> and all kinds of crazy stuff in here. Cloud seeding apparatuses, rainmakers, uh, you name it. Uh, there's some really interesting ones in here. Don't want to bore you with all the details, but check it out if you're really interested in who's uh, behind the technology. And then on down here to geoengineering patents, and what you're going to notice is a bunch of CDR ones and water alteration stuff. Very, very boring. Moving along, this one's fun. Cloud seeding. This one's called The History of Cloud Seeding from Pluviculture to Hurricane Hacking. Um, back in uh, 1860, 1850-ish, a guy named James Pollard Epsey, the Storm King, proposed a burning forest to cloud seed. Oh, yeah. Uh, this guy, General Dry Hence Forth, he got money from Congress back in 1890 and uh, went to uh, Texas and uh, the Sea Ranch in Andrews County, Texas, and began shooting at the sky with rockets, and cannons, and balloons. Oh, my. Um, it did not rain, and he was later dubbed General Dry Hence Forth, and his money was taken away. Ohio Frank Wizard, uh, <laughs> Rain Wizard Frank Melbourne. Good information on that. And uh, CW Post, the Post uh, serial guy, um, he also was a rainmaker. Read up on it. Charles Mallory Hadfield, the moisture accelerator, made it rain in San Diego. Rained so bad that it destroyed everything. <laughs> millions and millions of dollars of damage. Um, the city said they would pay this Native American Indian to make it rain. They would pay him $10,000. He made it rain, and the 1916 flooding of Lake Morena is epic and captured in this widespread panic song. 
I've seen them about 18 times. Love widespread panic. Check them out. Ode to Pluviculture, a, uh, a poem about weather modification. I will take the time to read this. Said Jeremy Jonathan Joseph Jones, the weather is far too dry, so I reckon I'll have to stir my bones and try the effect of concussive tones upon the lazy sky. So Jeremy Jonathan Joseph went away to the nearest town, and there his money was quickly spent for queer contraptions all intent to make the rain come down. There were cannons and mortars and lots of shells and dynamite by the ton with a gas balloon and chime of bells and various other mystic spells to overcloud the sun. Shout out to Geoengineering SRM. The day was fair and the sky was bright and never a cloud was seen when Jeremy Jonathan set alight his biggest fuse and screwed up tight the joints of the rain machine. He fired a shot and barely two when the sky began to pale. The third one brought a heavy dew, but at the fourth tornadoes blew with thunder, rain, and hail. <laughs> Love it. It rained all night and another day, and then for a week or more, it flooded the farm in a scandalous way and drowned poor Jeremy, sad to say, who couldn't stop the poor oh jeremy jonathan joseph jones your farm was fair to see but now a lake lies over its stones from whose dark bosom horrific moans are heard not to lee to check the flood you started i've heard all efforts were in vain until the bureau at washington stirred and stopped the storm with a single word by just predicting rain. And that is a repetitive history of weather modification. These people do not know what they're doing, yet they do it. And when the floods come down, Hatfield is not paid. And we are none the wiser. Let it, let it be said, let it be written. Moving along, nice story there. The Birth of Cloud Seeding, 1946, Vincent Schaefer, Vincent Irving Langmuir. Uh, <laughs> I oversimplify this here. Irving Langmuir theorized that the introduction of dry ice and iodide into a sufficiently moist cloud of low temperature could induce precipitation. Vincent Schaefer breathed into a freezer filled with dry ice. Ice formed. The birth of cloud seeding. <laughs> That's a joke. You got to read it. Anyway, um, current methods of cloud seeding. This section is broken into two parts, ground-based and air-based. Ground-based seeding works like this. You got a silver iodide generator. It's on top of a mountain. It's near the bottom of a mountain. This is called orographic seeding. And it basically goes up in the, the winds that hit this side of the mountain. They pull it up into the air and it comes down on top of the mountains. That is called snowpack augmentation. You can see that in a video on my YouTube channel. Where, uh, there they are. That's what they look like. This video is from 1981. Get down. Mm. Wait for it. A presentation of the Department of the Interior. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big government government bureau of reclamation it's cut off you can't see it at the bottom but that is the u.s bureau of the interior and u.s bureau of reclamation land reclamation anyway so this is what one looks like up close uh-huh here's another one yep and here's an even big uh neater one this is a multi-flare distributor these are all over our mountaintops. All of the Rockies have been seeded for well over 30 years. All of them. All of them. And a video on how it works right here from Snowy Hydro. And you can go to 343 and it says right about here. Song 2. 
A network of generator sites arranged along the western side of the mountain range burns minute amounts of silver iodide solution to create artificial ice forming particles which are swept up in the passing clouds. Invisible to the naked eye, each silver iodide crystal is so small that more than 300 million of them would fit on the head of a pin. When the supercooled water droplets come into contact with the tiny silver iodide crystals, they freeze, forming the very beginning of a snowflake. As the snowflakes continue to grow, they become too large to remain in the cloud and fall to the ground. And the result is this. Pristine snow, blanketing the snowy mountains. Snowy <laughs> blanketing the snowy mountains. So moving on, uh, airplane-based cloud seeding. There's a couple different types, glaciogenic uh, being one of them. Rainmaker video there. Here's a flare generator on the back of a plane. Here's one underneath the plane. There's a big one on the side of the plane. And here's the chemicals that they use in it. So uh, at the beginning of this video, we talked about the form. On the form, it says right here, type an amount of agent used in your weather modification, silver iodide, carbon dioxide. Hmm, that's odd. It's called dry ice. Use it a lot. Urea. That's pee pee, isn't it? And that urine? Urea? Isn't that urine? Uh, yeah, that's also fertilizer. Um, not cool. Sodium chloride. Salt. There you go. And other. What you, what you putting up there, bro? Um, so anyway, what do those look like? Because I, I was curious. Silver iodide looks like that. Carbon dioxide looks like that. Everybody talks about these fall streak holes and these hole punch clouds. But back here, this is uh, 1973. Modifying the weather, Western Geographical Series. Um, effects of seeding alto stratus clouds over Green Bay with dry ice. So that's, they sprinkle dry ice on there and it melts the clouds. That's called hole punch clouds or a cloud boring. Look up cloud boring. Military does it so they can shoot their lasers into space and talk to their satellites with encrypted lines. And if the cloud's in the way, somebody needs to punch a hole in that bad boy. Urea. There you go. Sodium chloride. Oh, by the way, that boat we mentioned at the beginning of the video, see, uh, the Seven Salters uh, silver lining boats. Here you go. Testing sea salt injections into marine stratocumulus as a geoengineering option. Da -da -da. Using cloud seeding geoengineering to uh, do that. So then here's carbon black emissions from airliners being sucked in. Here's a carbon black artificial cloud being sucked into a hurricane weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy 1976 uh, very interesting here's a another way to do it oh wait that's <laughs> the same way carbon black sud cloud over here it's black sun heats it steer hurricane no joke guys doing this his name is mosh alamaro mosh m-o-s-h-e alamaro anyway um carbon black aerosol seeding Mentioned in the weather modification, uh, owning the weather 2025. And it says here, we're going to be able to do carbon black dust seeding by 2005 in their little chart of how they want to modify the weather. And up here you see um, milestones in their, um, their cloud, their carbon black dust uh, modifications right here. And they've even got it coming right up to 2004. So next year is 2005. And, yeah, yeah, carbon black dust. Nobody talks about this carbon black dust. It's really weird. Weather modification using carbon black. Um, increased cirrus cloud cover to deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance. Decrease light level for nighttime operations. Makes sense to me. Dissipate fog, uncover targets, for visual aids. Anyway, read up on it. Does cloud seeding work? Eh, it's still out to lunch after 60 years. We conclude that the initiation of large-scale operational weather modification programs would be premature. This is 2003. <laughs> After 40 years, although 40 years have passed since the first NES report on weather modification, this committee finds itself very much in concurrence with its findings of that assessment 40 years ago. Pretty sad. And here's all the other statements. This one uh, pertains to geoengineering especially. Weather modification technologies that claim to achieve such large scale or dramatic effects do not have a sound basis, sound scientific basis, e.g. hail cannons, ionization methods, we'll get to that in a second, 
and geoengineering. I'm going to add that in. And should be treated with suspicion. Because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Don't let anybody tell you they control it all. They're trying to control it, and they're making a really big mess. Period. All right, so moving on to the next one. I love that article. Really good one. Hurricane hacking. This is the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, yeah. So we mentioned uh, Bill Gates' hurricane thing, and I said it had something to do with a DHS. So I wanted to find the DHS's uh, meeting. Well, it turns out here it is. DHS Hurricane Modification Workshop. You can watch that on my channel. Um, and uh, here is the actual workshop report. Had to dig, dig, dig for this. Found it on Wayback Machine. God bless your Wayback Machine. Or wait, no, I found it here. No, thank you, Stephen Salter. He had it. He, he actually uh, gave me his FTP to get this. So thank you, Stephen Salter. Um, so here's the word modification workshop. Now, I put a couple things in here. Limited scale field tests. This is what they propose, okay? This is their proposals. Salt seeding tests. Carbon black aerosol. <laughs> Carbon black. I'm going to keep saying it till you guys get it. Upper ocean cooling. That's like cut um, mylar films and oils and um, the salter sink anyway. Ion generators. Coming up soon. Uh, seeding mono layer films. Do, 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 moving down, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff. This is the whole thing. And each each of these doctors that come in here, they give their own uh, approach on it. Um, here's Dr. Mosh Alamaro. Like I said earlier, I added the photos just so you know. There were no photos on this. Um, and then there's a hurricane emasculation via ocean surface cooling, Dr. John Latham. And he's talking about using his boats. But then there's another one called the Salter Sink. And uh, Stephen Salter, his buddy, came up with that. This is um, wave-driven upwelling pumps, like pumps out there that pump water from the bottom of the ocean up to the surface to cool the surface top. It's called the Salter Sink. Do, do, do. And they're going to do that in uh, the Gulf Coast to keep a Katrina from ever happening again. That's what it's all about is Katrina. Katrina, 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 and Department of Homeland Security. So moving all the way through. Oh, by the way, I have a photo of these are all the guys that were there, and they're numbered with their names, so you can see them. There's Mosh and John Latham, and anyway, so there's that. Check into the Department of Homeland Security. I told on you. I told on you. Cloud ionization, electric rain making, and laser guided weather modification. Uh, here we go with cloud ionization techniques. Now, these are highly controversial. Uh, a lot of people say this doesn't work at all, but nonetheless, it's going on, so here it is. Negative, negatively charged ions go up. They form the cloud condensation nuclei that the water sticks to, and that's how we make rain. Uh, the World Meteorological Organization, after the Abu Dhabi experiments with Mateo systems, as pictured right here, um, they said that this stuff doesn't work, and that's where that... Uh, hail cannons and ionization methods are to be treated with suspicion came from. And uh, that was the expert team on weather modification making that statement. So here's Mateo Systems Weather Tech, and these are the guys that claim to make it rain 50 times in Abu Dhabi, uh, where there was none right there, 50 times. And here are the articles on that and their U.S. patent. AST Clear Sky Manager, uh, similar ionization system in Dubai over here. And then there's a description of that and links Australian rain technologies Atlant system similarly carried aloft makes rain ions aqueous global rain project they claim to have made it rain in the Horn of Africa by using atmospheric sine wave pat patterns and weather resonance technology they are using electromagnetic radiation to shift clouds. Signals are launched from ground-based servers to adjust flight paths of weather systems. On uh, AQS's page, on their technology, they show a Doppler radar. Very odd. Very, very odd. AQS has partnered with Cy Blue, David's David, Cy Blue's David Kaczynski, um, to make it rain in, Cal in uh, Texas in 2012. And uh, basically, they say that they steered... Uh, 
uh, clouds from the Gulf up here into Texas and made it rain. And this is their augmented rain capability. This is the seven day anomaly and it's off the chart. So they're saying this rain shouldn't have been there and we did it and we did it with resonance technology. So that's very interesting stuff. And here's their little science behind it. And by the way, their CEO, David Miles, is quoted as saying, in the U.S., they are trying to modify the ionosphere to get weather changes. That's a pretty important statement. We'll have to look into that with uh, the HARP stuff. So um, Ionogenics ELAT system, electrification of the local atmosphere. This is where it all started back with the Russians, and it's deployed in Mexico at these white dot locations. And uh, a company named Earthwise Technologies tried to put it in Laredo, Texas here, and that was Ionogenics. It says right here. Um, the guy from Earthwise Tech, I talked to him. He said this stuff works like a charm. I talked to him on the phone. Really nice gentleman, and uh, they shut him down. Uh, public opinion didn't believe in it. Lasers, laser-induced condensation. Yeah, that's right. They're shooting lasers to make clouds now. Here's a little block diagram of that, and uh, here's another one. Lasers are also used to create, divert, and steer lightning. Ooh, look, link removed. Happens all the time, but that's a story for another day and how that works. Cosmic rays, radioactivity, ionization with particles, cloud condensation, nuclei, ice makes clouds. Oh yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So keep looking into those. Moving back over here to the geoengineering page. Um, and by the way, on the ionization technologies, I put a video up on my YouTube channel called Rain on Request. They're actually doing an Indiegogo right now to put ionizers up in California. Uh, please check this video out. Very, very crazy stuff. Um, so going back over here. Now, I just mentioned David Kaczynski from Cyblu and Aqueous. Well, it turns out Mr. Uh, David Kaczynski wrote a paper called Using the Rivers of the Troposphere. Now, he is the CEO of Cyblue Inc., um, based out of La Junta, Colorado. They have an airfield out there. This is the most interesting man I've ever heard of. Please look him up. He's a, a real American hero, weather modified and, you know, badass. So check him out. And he is quoted as saying, fresh water has been dubbed blue gold in many publications as potable water will be to this century what oil was to the last century. Yes, less than 3% of the water on Earth's surface is fresh water. When we deduct the amount in the ice at the, each pole and the rivers flowing in uninhabited areas, that number is less than 1%. From this amount, the nearly 7 billion people on Earth used to survive. So, basically, we're running out of clean water. Um, fracking, you know, you name it. There's there's a million reasons why it's getting polluted and destroyed. And they've been weather modifying, they've been modifying the weather with this cloud seeding techniques and, you know, electromagnetic and chemical dumps and all this stuff for Oh, for at least 50 years, you're talking since 1946 when it was originally invented, but they were doing it before then, so... That's that's our problem here today. The blue gold rush. Look this stuff up. You're gonna find uh, Water 2025, um, where they, you know, the government's done studies saying that there will be wars and wars and wars as a result of water and people being displaced. Anyway, rivers in the sky. These are called tropospheric rivers, oceanic atmospheric rivers (OARs). Look them up. Um, basically. People only talk about the, the jet stream. They talk about the jet stream, jet stream, jet stream when they talk about harp and weather modification. You really need to focus on these things. The oceanic atmospheric rivers, um, they used to flow right into LA on a daily basis. Uh, and that's that's changed. It's changed over time. Here's the thing from Water 2025 right here. And they say conflict potential, highly likely. You see the red areas? These are places that will not have water if things continue. Um, so this is this is big, big problem that really nobody's looking at. So uh, please look into the water 2025 and the blue gold rush. Moving along. Our next one is on engineering tornadoes. That's right. They are they're here. This one's called solar vortex. It's uh, making tornadoes to make electricity. That's right. Believe it or not. So I'm going to just skip on through that one. If you're interested in tornado power, check it out. Great article on that. And there's a little tornado. And back over here, we're going down to military weather warfare. Now, everybody talks about 
the Air Force 2025 owning the weather papers. Well, and, he, and all the debunkers say that was just a what if. What if I told you that they took the Air Force 2025 papers and then actually presented it at an Army base? Would that get your attention? Test Technology Symposium 97. Air Force 2025 was written in 95 and 96. The next year at the Test Technology Symposium, the Army After Next How Will We Test Weather Modification section. And you can see these here. I got this from uh, archive.org so that we can all play along from the Phillips Air <laughs> uh, Phillips Lab. Anyway, moving here, and you can see those. And there's the abstracts where I got all this. So um, this is what the, the front page looks like. Weather Modification Test Technology Symposium, Advanced Weapon Instrumentation Technologies, Johns Hopkins University, Applied Physics Lab, Dr. Arnold A. Barnes, Jr., Senior Scientist of Optical Effects Division, Phillips Lab, March 1997. And in this paper, they basically break down all of the stuff from Air Force 2025. And because I got the original, and I don't know why... I'm not seeing that original link that I copied most of this from. But um, anyway, so here's all the stuff that they have there. And then each one of these had a note on the slide. I have two different versions of this, the original, and I got one up on Scribd. Um, but anyway, so these notes are very telling. You should look at them. And they say treaty issues. Well, you got the UN Convention on Prohibition of Military Use. This is called NMOD, this big long word right here. Shortened version NMOD. And they talk about, well, it's in place, but, you know, we could get around that. Local non persistent changes, you know, that's cool. Since 1978, the Air Force has been in a position that weather modification had little utility or military payoff as a weapon of war. It's kind of changed lately. The official Air Force position needs to be reevaluated. This is 1997. In the light of 19, of 19 years of scientific advances, in the light of advanced weapon systems, which are more environmentally sensitive, to prepare against technological surprise. So, you know, we got to, you know, this paper was very interesting, and you know what? We really should do it. <laughs> and that's basically what they're saying there. And, uh, you know, U.S. Army war game reveals satellite vulnerability. And, you know, they're taking this stuff very ser seriously. Now, here's a very interesting part. The next two pages, and they're talking about the next two slides, describe, one, a natural phenomenon which will impact space operations and communications every 11 years. They increase solar maximum. Isn't that neat? And then, so that's on this slide. And then number two, a man-made modification of the ionosphere, which has the potential of extending over the horizon surveillance and improving communications to the warfighter. The Air Force Geophysics Directorate is heavily involved in both of these areas, both from research aspects and from the impact and application to Air Force and DOD weapon systems. And then they talk about heart. So there's your DOD weapon system integration. Um, and then they continue on with potential weather modification capabilities. Oh, and by the way, they talk about some of their stuff um, that they've done in the past. Hole clearing, hole clearing, hole clearing. Talked about that earlier. That's those holes you're seeing. <laughs> so uh, hole clearing with carbon black, hole clearing with silver iodide, hole clearing by helicopter. That's not in there. That's, you know, all this is from the notes. So check these out. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, Project Fido, I believe it was called. Um, anyway, so that's not in the notes there. That's from memory. Moving along, that hurricane thing again. Carbon seeding black. And yes, they talk about engineering design for airborne carbon black delivery systems completed 2004. And then they reference those same numbers that I have from that PDF that you saw earlier. So yeah, I I'm inclined to believe that. Build upon NOAA's AMP, a joint NOAA. This is the... Uh, Atmospheric Modification Program, a joint NOAA state's effort written into NOAA's budget every year by Congress, the Illinois State Water Survey studies of inadvertent weather modification, and articles of the Journal of Weather Modification. So yeah, military involved in all three of those. And we could go through the rest of this, but let's keep going. So yeah, cloud cover of the Earth. Um... 
let's go on through the end of this. So then you got cloud impacts on DOD operations and systems, uh, Vietnam, Operation Popeye, Gulf War aborted missions. So basically they're saying that the weather is a factor in all of these. We should be able to control it. Storm modification, how much energy they need. Oh, wait a minute. The butterfly effect <laughs> could be unpredictable, but we're going to do it anyway. And uh, people really need to know this. Everybody talks about the weather 2025 documents. Nobody talks about this thing. And this is where they actually put it into implementation. And uh, for the contrail, chemtrail guys, summary, current capabilities. This is 1997. This is what the military says at the end of this. We can, on this day, targeted fog dispersal, local changes in precipitation, like cloud seeding, cloud modification for surveillance and coverage, hole boring, punching holes in clouds, and create suppressed cirrus contrails. They're bragging about making chemtrails right there. Ionospheric modification. That's hard. So all of this, they, they said that they could do current capabilities, 1997. Energy requirements too large for major storms. Treaty restrictions, new weapon systems push the envelope. The environment must be considered from the start of the con concept designed for all new weapon systems. This is 1997. So we're in 2014, people. This has come a long way since what we're reading here. And, uh, you know, check this out, too. So, anyway, the, here's the papers, the originals down at the bottom, and more links there. Moving along. Geoengineering roots. This is Dr. Evil, <laughs> Lowell Wood, who uh, at the Lawrence Livermore Labs uh, did the original papers that have really kicked off the geoengineering push. Please read through this about uh, Lowell Wood. Teller and Hyde, and uh, how Dr. Evil got with Ken Caldera, modeled the future environment, and decided that they were going to, you know, geoengineer the world, that it was a good idea. Um, Lowell enjoys playing the role of Dr. Evil, says Ken Caldera, whose own political and solid, who is, whose own politics are solidly enviro, enviro lefty, but he also happens to be brilliant, and he's one of the few people I know who is thinking about the nuts and bolts of how to actually manage the Earth's climate. I don't really think of him as a scientist. He's a planetary engineer. That's the same guy that invented the H bomb, the weapon that should never be used, and it was a weapon designed to put fear into the hearts of everybody on the planet so that we would just not ever use it. Is geoengineering the same thing? Is it the scariest thing you could possibly imagine for the express intent of never being used? I think so. And he says, threats are my business. He says, I help the government figure out who can kill us and how and when. Very, very interesting paper here. Um, Wood considers the issue mood as a tool of warfare. Weather modification has been a complete failure. And uh, when you ask Wood, he says, a secret government conspiracy, one of the remarkable things I've learned about working with the government is that there are no secrets. It's all out there. You just have to know where to look. No secrets? He says, well, maybe five or six. So keep looking, people. Keep looking. <laughs> but anyway, it's a great article. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a very interesting guy with some really, really crazy thoughts. And, uh, you know, a guy who talks about killing everybody on the planet like cockroaches is somebody you probably should listen to, especially when the government does. Um, then uh, we only got two to go here, and then I'm going to wrap this up. So a hard look at perils and potentials of geoengineering um, by Jeff Goodall. Jeff Goodall's really changed his... Uh, tune lately and it's kind of singing the praises of the geoengineers but i won't hold that against him um but what he, this paper is about is the asilomar conference and basically this was like a climate conference where all the geoengineers of the world came together and they said you know here they all are in this photo and they said you know we should we should really take this seriously this is 2010 pacific grove california pacific grove california you'll know why i said that um this is the point of it, though. Trust is everything. And they say the whole game is about establishing credibility. These guys want to be credible. <laughs> Internet credible is what you are. If the public comes to see geoengineering, as one attendee put it, as a crazy idea cooked up by rich Anglo-Saxons to dominate the climate, then we will all rightfully be tarred and feathered. Um these are all Anglo-Saxons. I don't see any black people. I don't know about you, but these are definitely all Anglo-Saxons. They're probably all rich, and they think that they can just come in and start modifying the weather on a global basis. 
as we stated earlier in the video, cloud seeding has been going on for over you know, 40, 50 years. It has still not been proven. These guys seem to think that they can come along and do the whole damn world all at once, and it ain't going to be a problem. They're just going to be taken credibly. Yeah, good luck with that. So um, great paper on that. Which brings us to our, our last one, Angels Play This Harp. Um, this is about harp and geoengineering and nobody ever talks about this stuff. Climate change. What the heck is climate change really about in a nutshell, the Arctic methane emergency group, AMEG, you've probably heard about them by now. They have this video called the day the o oceans boiled and here's how it goes. They dug a hole in the ice and took a column of ice out and they looked all the way back to when the dinosaurs were and they saw a whole bunch of CO2 there followed by a bunch of methane and their assumption is that dinosaur farts melted ice uh, frozen methane deposits which released into the atmosphere and quickly killed everybody and now they're saying that up to 50 gigatons of methane frozen methane could be released abruptly at any time so their strategic plan that they sent to all the leaders of the world was to start geoengineering immediately. And all of these quotes are real. It's This is where the whole climate change geoengineering push is really coming from, is this thing called the clathrate gun hypothesis. And they believe that methane hydrates um, are going to just vaporize and kill us all. So they propose preparing the supply and logistics for spraying aerosol precursor in large quantities, preferably into the lower stratosphere, for deployment by next March or April. <laughs> okay, and this was in 2012 that this paper was written. So they were saying by March or April 2013, we need to start geoengineering. Prepare for large deployment of particles such as titanium oxide and other sulfate aerosols. Marine cloud brightening with a view to deployment on a large scale by spring 2013. That's the silver lining boats we just talked about. Suitable chemicals need to be identified, confirmed with stockpiling of these cloud seeding chemicals. Aircraft need to be kitted out to spray these chemicals. This is coming from the Arctic Methane Emergency Group who sent this list to every single leader in the known world. Consider techniques for unsticking of blocked weather patterns. What the hell are these guys talking about? So this is really interesting stuff. And, of course, the U.K. government's response to the AMEG's call for geoengineering is priceless. They basically tell them, look, man, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, and we couldn't do this. So then AMEG wrote them back a response to their response going, man, come on. Um, so is that the end of the story? I don't think so. So I started digging into this stuff, and it turns out that there was a huge methane leak in the North Sea by Total SA, and they had a blowout with about 350 million cubic feet of uh, methane. It was blowing out over a six-month period. And then shortly thereafter, AMEG started complaining about atmospheric methane. By the way, the BP oil spill, also a methane blowout. They hit a methane hydrate. It blew a hole in the top of the rig, burnt a hole in it. So that methane that they're complaining about that's just coming out into the sky, it's coming from fracking wells. 19% of the fracking uh, uh, methane coming up goes straight into the air in the United Basin. Go look it up. And those are called fugitive emissions. So between fugitive emissions and dr massive drilling accidents, there's a lot of methane up there, true. But I'm not saying it's a clathrate gun hypothesis. By the way, there's also this thing called the Angel's Proposal. Arctic natural gas extraction, liquefaction, and sales is a plan to drill under the ice and extract gas and oil. And it seems to be related to Project Lucy, which would involve three radars focusing their beam on methane clouds and turning those methane clouds into diamond dust, something formerly left to the science fiction world of alchemy. So they say if you hit diamond dust or methane clouds in the sky with a 13.56 megahertz frequency from three radars that you can compress that methane into diamond dust like 007 like solar radiation management geoengineering with diamond dust they're called noctilucent clouds and uh they say right here generate sunshine reflecting noctilucent clouds in increasing amounts in the mesosphere which can reflect sun's energy back into space 
Oh, by the way, those noctilucent clouds are formed from the breakdown of methane in a circular zone above the harp transmitter. Oh, by the way, if that works, well, then we can do it at the other four other facilities worldwide, High Pass, Arecibo, Puerto Rico, Icecat, Norway, Sura. Um, that's crazy. And this says John Hersher, director of Harp Go Conan. Now, I don't think he wrote this. This was in Malcolm Light's um, paper, but still, that's a pretty huge statement you're saying there. So you're telling me that Harp can make noctilucent clouds and compress methane into diamonds to do geoengineering? Oh, wait, there's a there's a chart. Ooh, methane in the air compressed between two radar beams. Methane between three radar beams. Oh, we're making diamonds over here. By the way, the transmitters can be mounted on submarines, planes, and after 2015 on boats and r drilling rigs when the Arctic ice cap has melted. I don't know if anybody looked this year, but they were real wrong. Lots of ice this year. There's your Angel's proposal, Arctic natural gas extraction, liquefaction, and sale. These Angels are all about that oil. Ain't nothing changed. Nothing's changed. Same old, same old. And, you know, they say that here's the surface temperature hotspots and global warming. And, oh, man, we're just screwed here, man. Um, yeah, look into it. Clathrate gun hypothesis. Here's where they talk about getting the methane out before it kills us. But, oh, by the way, we're going to make a lot of money doing it. You know, fracking the entire North Pole. Sounds like a total win-win, right? Frack the North Pole, save us from methane, and you won't have to do this Project Lucy thing. Where you're, uh, you know, using harp to <laughs> turn the methane clouds into diamond dust. It doesn't get any crazier than that. Malcolm Light, yeah, Sam Grana, you guys are, you guys are great, man. <laughs> that's, that's interesting stuff. So anyway, I told Ken Caldera about this, and then they, um, <laughs> uh, over on uh, the AMEG site, they had quoted Ken Caldera, and I, I wrote an article about it. Ken on his forum like lost it in public. He's like, get my name off that site. I don't know why you put it. Anyway, long story. Um, so the other articles here, there's one about the chemtrails debate. We'll save that for another day. Um, and a chemtrail timeline here and a weather control timeline here and a whole nother page on harp here with about 17 articles. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's about all I'm going to be able to do in one video. I think if you're still here, then you really care about this topic, then you're going to already come over here to climateviewer.com slash geoengineering and get involved. You know, look this stuff up. These timelines are here for your reference, for your viewing pleasure, and, you know, for education of others. Come over here, click on the timeline, click the little arrow to the side, and, uh, you know, get up to date. Bring this, pull this sucker on up here to, you know, the 2000s and see what's going on because it gets really crazy really quick up here. So, uh... With that, please, guys, look into this California cloud seeding, PG&E, Desert Research Institute, Sacramento Municipal Utility District, PG&E, DRI, Modesto Irrigation District. These are the guys paying for cloud seeding, okay? They pay for it. All you got to do is say stop it. That's all you got to do. So if you're armed with the truth, you can go out and change the world, and I really hope people use this material, learn this material, and then we can really get somewhere. Oh, that's a great one right there. Yeah, about China Lake. China Lake. We're going to end right there. So, um, guys, come over here to the climateviewer.com slash geoengineering. If there is something not on the page, let me know. I want this to be the most thorough page on weather modification on the Internet, and I believe that it is. So uh, send me your links. Uh, please share this out with your friends and uh, educate the public. Education and knowledge is power, and unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Love you, mean it. Come check me out on the YouTube. YouTube user R3ZN8D. Love you guys.